Red Bank, New Jersey is a special town near the Atlantic coast. It's got a thriving, trendy downtown, admired by many. It was even selected by Smithsonian Magazine as one of the coolest towns in America. It's got great restaurants, theaters, street fairs, and more. And getting there is easy. It's right near a major highway. There's a train, bus station with access to New York City, and even a river that can take you to the Atlantic Ocean. But what about an airport? Uh, an airport in Red Bank? I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's room for an airport, to be honest. An airport? Hmm. Hmm. Um, first question would be, where would we put it? At an airport, yeah. in Shrewsbury Avenue. Actually, it was in Shrewsbury Township or, or Tinton Fall. Wait, what? Yes, they're right. Red Bank actually had a working commercial airport. Where? This land is a lot of things today. There's fast food restaurants, car dealerships, industrial buildings, and even an animal hospital. By McDonald's back in there. As early as the 1920s, the property that sits between Hans Avenue and Shrewsbury Avenue, just south of Apple Street in what is now Tinton Falls, New Jersey, was the home of the Red Bank Airport. And it even had its own airline. A Red Bank native named Jack Casey learned to fly in the Army during World War I. When he returned home, he bought a war era. Jenny aircraft and used the frozen Navisink River as a runway. But before long, Casey purchased 12 acres of land on the outskirts of town to be used as a grass field for his plane. He teamed up with J. Horace Barkley of Rumpson to purchase adjoining land and to fund the formation of the Airview Flying Service, which provided everything from flying lessons to day trips to aerial photography. The new property totaled 160 acres. About this time, many of the roads in Monmouth County were being paved and Shrewsbury Avenue was improved, which helped with access to the facility. Casey grew the business, and with his military background, he made connections at nearby Fort Monmouth, a U.S. Army installation that didn't have an airfield, but was the headquarters of the Signal Corps and communicating with aircraft was a hot topic. The Army used Casey's Red Bank Airport for transportation, equipment testing, and other uses. During the Depression era, the Works Progress Administration, in conjunction with the borough of Red Bank, invested in improvements at the airport. In 1936, the WPA built two new runways two hangars that held 28 aircraft, a restaurant, as well as a beacon and lighting system for night operations. In 1938, Jack Casey retired and sold the airport and Airview to Walter Loudenslager, who moved to Red Bank from Connecticut to take over the operation. Loudenslager took the airport to new heights and formalized commercial air travel, offering flights for charter, for wealthy residents from Rumson and Middletown to events such as the World's Fair, Long Island polo matches, and up to Saratoga, New York for the racing season. The pilots that worked at the airport during those years typically earned $3,000 a year, which would be roughly $55,000 in today's dollars. By 1940, the airport boasted a 2,700-foot runway and about 39 planes on the site. As the country was preparing for World War II, the Army, remember the Air Force didn't exist yet, got very interested in expanding Red Bank Airport so they could use it for emergencies as well as to land troops and equipment for use at Fort Monmouth. Military officials wanted to fund even greater expansion of the facility, but local residents started to express some concern about noise and increased activity and other dangers. One such concern was a terrible fire in the summer of 1949, which burned down a hangar, destroying over 30 planes. 
By the 1950s, the airport was seen as a critical part of the community, and there were plans for even greater usage, despite some complaints from neighbors. Loudenslager started to envision a true commercial airport with passenger service that would connect to regional hubs. At public events and in newspaper interviews, the owner describes the airport as something, quote, as essential as a railroad station, end quote, to the community. With this vision, 1951 brought the start of regularly scheduled air taxi service to Newark, Idlewild, which later became JFK Airport, and Philadelphia. The mini airline consisted of three Beechcraft Bonanza three-passenger airplanes, and a 15-minute flight to Newark cost $15 one way. The service had agreements with major airlines such as TWA, so you could buy tickets in combination with long-haul flights and get a discounted rate. Red Bank Air Taxi grew during the 1950s, until 1958 when Loudenslager sold the air taxi company to James Loeb, a former Navy pilot who had been working for Loudenslager. Loeb had even greater horizons for the business and the airfield, and by 1962, Loeb controlled the ownership of the whole property. It was during the early 60s when the airport really took off. By 1960, the small airline carried 13,500 passengers, and in 61, over 18,000 passengers, and amazingly served nearly 23,000 passengers in 1963. In 1963, a brand new, modern terminal building was constructed just off Shrewsbury Avenue, roughly where this gas station sits today. New Jersey Governor Richard Hughes was at the ribbon cutting, and the new structure featured a glass atrium lobby, complete with an Avis rental car desk and other services. Celebrities like Bob Hope even used the airport when performing at the newly minted Garden State Arts Center. Nearly doubling the scope of the business in three years got the attention of a lot of people, and not all of it was positive. The noise and fear of crashes had neighbors and local governments challenging the future of the airport and its growing popularity, but it didn't slow down low. By the mid-60s, the airline, now called Suburban Airlines, had over 25 pilots and flew 60 flights a day delivering passengers to larger area airports for connections. Suburban Airlines had at least five planes, a few turboprop larger planes, and smaller twin-engine aircraft. While all this was underway, the flight school continued to grow as well, now with over 100 students led by four instructors. Not everything was going well during this period. In 1960, one of the air taxi planes crashed into Raritan Bay on the way to Newark, killing an atomic scientist and injuring two Catholic priests and the pilot. Then, in 1965, an air taxi plane coming from Newark to Red Bank also crashed into the bay, killing both people on board. But the worst tragedy of all came in the winter of 1967. It was January 4th, when the 6.45 a.m. flight to Kennedy Airport, a twin-engine Beechcraft carrying nine people took off to the west from Red Bank. The weather was not ideal, light rain, fog, and surely cold temperatures. The plane took to the air, but within minutes, dipped and crashed just hundreds of feet west of the airport. The 170 gallons of fuel on board ignited, causing a tremendous explosion and fire. All nine on board were killed instantly.
local resident Steve Shondell grew up in the neighborhood just west of the airport. He recalls the crash as he got ready for school. And the vivid memory I have of that day was the, the airplane taking off. I was, again, very young. And I used to watch the airplanes take off all the time, all the time. And all of a sudden, this plane took off, and it was in the morning. I believe I was getting ready for school. And it sort of turned upside down. If I remember, it's, it, it just lost control. And it fell into a field, and I, I don't recall it bursting into flames, although it could have. But at that very moment, my mother started to scream. Other incidents started to rack up, including a plane skidding off the runway onto Shrewsbury Avenue. And in 1968, a single-engine plane crashed onto the grounds of Shrewsbury Elementary School, but thankfully no one was injured. Not all of the activity at the airport in the late 60s was bad, however. Local businessmen loved the shuttle service to major airports during the jet-set era of corporate travel. Other residents used the airport to come home after serving in the military. Middletown resident Kevin Bull was serving in the Navy during the Vietnam War and recalls the homecoming he got at the airport. Well, that was, um, I believe, September of 69, thereabout. And, um, I was just coming back from my second tour of duty in Vietnam. Uh, once we landed, I found an airplane that would take me to Red Bank Airport and called everybody. And I had, I guess, all my siblings. And I don't remember the whole picture, but I, I think one or two of my cousins were there. And uh, it worked out great. And the plane just flew right up. They walked right up to the plane. and. There it was. The early 1970s was a time of massive real estate development in Monmouth County, and the area around the airport was no exception. But had been farms and open fields were converted to single-family homes and commercial buildings. This really ramped up the pressure on the airport. Local governments and residents were closing in with complaints of noise and risk of crashes. Jim Loeb was even rumored to be considering allowing small jets to service the facility, which increased the criticism. Besides suburban airlines, other businesses used Red Bank Airport as well, including the first family of Monmouth County photography, the Dorns. Dorns' famous photography shop in Red Bank was augmented with aerial photography services, and many of the photos of the airport come from the Dorn's collection. By 1970, Loeb had merged Suburban Airlines with Reading Aviation, a much larger company. Early that year, Loeb was made chairman of Reading Aviation, and he finally had his chance to make Red Bank Airport the larger regional hub he had always envisioned. Despite holding this executive position, Loeb still loved to fly, and he would pilot commercial flights himself out of Red Bank regularly. In the spring of 1970, Loeb piloted a charter flight to take three local business leaders to Canada for a business trip. Amory Haskell and John Ellis of Middletown, as well as Arthur Whalen of Summit, were returning to New Jersey with Loeb on March 17th, while approaching to land at Newark in bad weather, the Cessna 402 aircraft struck the metal framework of a natural gas storage tank in Elizabeth, downing the plane and killing all four on board. This tragedy was widely publicized, and with Loeb himself being lost in the accident, there was no one left to defend and promote the airport. By the summer of 1971, the airport was forced to close. Dan Dorn Sr., flying his Piper Tri-Pacer, was the last plane 
to leave the field. The property sat undeveloped for a time. There were even calls to reopen the airport from some corners, but after a few years, the land was carved up and sold off in parcels. By the late 1970s, several retail businesses had cropped up along Shrewsbury Avenue, including a McDonald's at the corner of Apple Street. Gas stations and restaurants filled into the south, and by the 1980s, most of the former airport grounds were filled with manufacturing and office spaces, and later a housing development off Hance Avenue. Today, it's hard to imagine an airport in this location, but if you look very carefully, between a drainage area and a parking lot, there are remnants of the taxiway that planes once used to reach the runway. It's as if the airport just doesn't want to completely disappear, proof that something very different once existed there. Perhaps if the safety record had been better, and if the real estate hadn't become so desirable, Red Bank would still have a thriving airport. Instead, aside from some crumbling pavement, the airport is now just a faded memory. Thank you.